each other and that means me committing to being Northern Cheyenne. So you're stuck with me. It ain't in me to worry about people's opinions about things. What role you're going to have to play. Yeah. The point I was getting at it was how strict the Cheyenne ways are, anybody's ways for that matter. Because that's how they survive, that's how they live, that's how they are carried on. The Cheyenne people believe that there is a balance between man and woman. Like the thing I struggle with, you know, the time where your guys' emotions are out of control that time of the month. And I didn't know anything about that until I left, like, the reservation. But I have to remind myself of that to not hold you to that standard of my mom and my grandmother of how strong they were. But as long as we're, we're in it together, to me, that's what matters. No, you're in it for yourself. Whatever. <laughs> it's all about you. Just for the wedding day. <laughs> like I said, it'll be my one day in the next 40 whatever years. <laughs> Just kidding. Everything? Yeah, that's it. 
Hannah's going to come. And her kiddos, which is awesome because that gives Tristan some company. But I have a feeling that other people will be coming a little later too because it's a work day. Is there more stuff on the couch? Mm -hmm. Is there more stuff on the couch and on the coffee table? There's a couple of towels and stuff on there. Would you mind grabbing them? So that our company isn't staring at our laundry. It looked so clean when we had the open house. Like everything was all neat and tidy and tucked away everywhere. Isn't that what this is? This is the open house, but it's not neat and tidy and knocked in everywhere. I thought you said everybody's family, so what difference does it make? No, no. Leave it. Leave it. Say hi quiet. No. Leave it. Hey, honey. You need to be quiet. No. Okay. No, Tia. Tristan, can you get the rest of that laundry off the coffee table, please? And um, go put it away. No, actually, no. That's Dad's pile. He can take it downstairs. He doesn't want you to wear his. Tristan. It's okay, Topaz. <laughs> because we love our new home and we haven't had a chance to really celebrate that with everybody yet. Anyway, I'm wondering if Uncle Jerry would be willing to do a prayer with spirit faith.
What do you got? Can I see it? A bumblebee? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's Thaddeus. That's Thaddeus, and I'm Russell. <laughs> No, Bobcats. Did you hear what your sister's saying? She's saying bad words. Tell her, go Grizz. Say, go Grizz. Good job. See ya. Growing up, we found this truck stop in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh -huh. I had homemade biscuits and gravy. We were talking to the cook and trying to get his recipe. Right. Did he ever give it to you? Yeah. Oh, really? Uh -huh. So do you have Nancy making that for you? <laughs> that one there is a secret. <laughs> Yeah, Alicia was a really good cook. When you get to eating some of that food like that, that's really exceptional, and you sure miss it. You know, as a family, we had our struggles. Being the ceremonial woman that she is, of course, our mom wants me to be married to a native woman. Right, yeah. So I was trying to figure out why Thad's been getting so worked up about the animals. It actually has to do with his immune system stuff. In fact, like that's his blanket right there. In the Northern Cheyenne tradition, to be gifted a blanket is like one of the highest honors that you can be given. Well, but, I'm trying uh, my best to keep them tame. No, it's not directly <laughs> at you, honey. I'm just, just saying. I'm just, I'm just sharing. <laughs> My understanding is that in Northern Cheyenne culture, the men and the women, have, they carry different knowledge about things, and um, I need to ask Thaddeus's mom about. What, what exactly does that mean? I'm the mother here and I'm going to talk to you that way. I might be a Sundance woman, but I'm no saint. You might be Caucasian, but you've got a native upbringing. And that's spirituality and a belief that we have. We go to these ceremonies. The women are always waiting on the men because that's our role. Make sure these men that are working out there that they're going to be fed. And I can see that about you. It's a choice. You can be a good helpmate for him. My niece would always go fishing with us, and I think she was about seven or eight. And um, she always wanted to try to bait her own her own hook, so she really she really dug in there and grabbed one of the worms out. And worm jumps out of her hand. She's like, "Oh, so you want to be a fucking cowboy?" Huh? <laughs> <laughs> We were like, hey, 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 man, don't be talking like that. Your mom ain't gonna let you come fishing with us.
the Cheyennes used to have a way of fasting that was in the water. This old man that was going to hand it down passed away. So it wasn't handed down. It was ended with him. Our traditions ain't being taught. And that's why the young kids are committing suicide. Why the drugs and the alcohol? Yeah, up on our area, it's crazy how many suicides. And it's in the young kids. There was a kid here a while back, eight, nine years old. I remember if I asked you before, but you, you've been into one, haven't you? Or you been around one to sweat? No, not really. Okay. I've heard about them some, but I've never actually been right around one or anything. Because out here in tour, run a sweat out there for uh, veterans and stuff. People with, uh, what is it, like uh, PTSD with traumas. And... I got total respect for them because they've been through things that I can't even imagine. of that girl was walking towards me. Her eyes like black sockets. She was laughing and telling me, you think you're going to get some rest? I'm going to come and steal your soul while you're sleeping. to use all your senses, I mean all of them, especially your sight, your hearing, the smell, and you're going to feel how this car handles because all vehicles are different. Kind of like what we talk about, chicks, women, you know, it's, they have different personalities, you have to adjust yourself to each one. A vehicle is the same way. You have to have respect for it because if you get behind a wheel uh, with the wrong attitude, you're going to hurt somebody or hurt yourself. That's why I don't wear a seatbelt. 
because if I feel I'm in a situation where I need to wear a seatbelt, then either I need to slow down or or there's something I need to adjust to feel more safer. So with that, you know, the mental part of it is a big thing when you're driving. The rest is the mechanical part of it. Man, don't be eating up my road snacks, man. Your mom's going to get mad at you, man. They're just really good. I haven't had sweetest fish since sixth grade, so... (laughs) So have you worked at other tribal programs other than just Salish Kootenai? Other than just here. So I've gotten to do some kind of support work in Fort Peck, on Northern Cheyenne, on Crow. They didn't know that you were Lakota. Yeah. So I just always assumed that you were from here. here. So, um, and I actually, and I don't claim, I, and I've, I'm always really careful about this. Like I am not Lakota by blood. I was... Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was younger, we went through a lot of traumas caused by one of my mom's husbands. We were homeless and we were in a women's shelter. My mom was pretty broken. When I was about 13, we started going to um, Lakota ceremonies with her and uh, this family in Pine Ridge um, adopted us, but it's been challenging because I feel like I sit in between these two worlds. Um, And so in my work, I feel like now I have the language for it. I didn't when I was younger. I was, I didn't, my identity was all over the place uh, because I didn't really feel like I belonged anywhere. I recognize you from the pictures. Okay. Hi, <laughs> Jackie, right? Yeah, right? Nice to meet nice you. To meet you too. Yeah. So I'm looking at him, and I was like, man, I just can't, I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, what? And I said, well, you weren't even my time. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been engaged? Since August 5th, on my birthday. I didn't think that one through. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do on their next birthday. Let <laughs> me see your ring. Ended up being oh, in wow. Bozeman, too. Mm. That, that is yeah. nice. So, okay, so how about you guys? Well, I got a promise ring from us. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And so then we decided to move in together, and um, it was kind of a big deal for me because yeah. I wasn't going to ever do that. She kept kind of putting her off and putting her off, and I thought, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. <laughs> Especially because, like, none of us are young spring chickens. Yeah, right? no kidding, really. <laughs> when he proposed, I was like, this is too fast. Yeah. I was worried with the kids. Mm-hmm. But he said, this isn't to rush you. It's just so you know how sure I am. Really, I didn't want to take that ring to the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>
lights on. What is that? Hey. It's one of those reality shows or something. I thought the one where that woman has big lips on it. I don't, I don't know if it is or not. Remember that boat tops or whatever that is. She's yeah. Llama Llama Red Pajama reads a story with his mama. Mama kisses baby's hair. Mama Llama goes downstairs. Llama Llama Red Pajama calls down to his llama mama. What is Mama Llama doing? Baby Llama starts boo-hooing. Llama Llama Red Pajama in the dark without his mama. Eyes wide open, covers drawn. What if Mama Llama's Gone. So to you and I, my a story is a lot more in depth. Like once upon a time, there was this amazing character, and they went on this grand adventure, and they lived happily ever after. Right? We have all these different parts to a story. For that child, their story was I splashed, and it's also based in what? What's that? Their experiences. Their experiences. And she was probably thinking he was just saying, you know, one day I went to the beach with my family, right? But he's like, no, no, there's a dinosaur. <laughs> so I love that part. So uh, we'll leave it there, and I will see you next week. Thank you. So Rhiannon and Tristan, yeah. you guys come and get the table ready. Yeah. I have just a few minutes here before I'm going to have to go, so. I really Did you run the dishwasher or did you just fill it? I fill it because there was no oh dish. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 Tristan. Tristan, it's, it's just a bowl. Don't, don't step on the glass. Just a moment. You it's just a bowl. You've a lot of glass lately. I am feeling very upset. What I miss. I broke mom's bowl and mom's upset, so. Tristan, I would like you to get the broom and dustpan and I'd like you to sweep this up, please. Thank you. This is your job to clean up, not Rhiannon's. I know. I... Rhiannon, could you finish setting the table, please? I'm gonna get okay. you a new favorite bowl. It'll be Native Americans, just like you like it. Okay. I'll sweep it up, please. It's just frustrating because there's no clean dishes. And I've been, try, I've been doing really good not to panic, but I did have a full day's worth of work to do, and I haven't been able to do anything. So is that what this is all about? No, it, I'm saying... Let's get this over with so you saying, can get to work. Okay. You're frustrated with me. Yes, because it wasn't about the dominance of the man and the female. No, I know that. And like, there's just certain things that we don't do. So think about it before you took it one step further and made it more personal. Can we just let it go? Don't touch me. I'm sorry that... Actually, I don't feel like I need to apologize for anything else. I didn't ask you to apologize. Oh, okay. I'm going to go out front for a minute.
your hair. I don't know. It's kind of red. Yeah, I know. Looks good. So Levi liked it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's just like, I like your hair color. Don't dye your hair. And I'm like, I'm going to do it anyway. He's like, no. And then I did it. And he's like, no. Oh. And then he's like, I like your hair. <laughs> I freaking told you. <laughs> just listen to me. And see, that's good. You didn't listen to him. You did what you wanted to do. So what are you thinking about going to school after culinary? I think I definitely want to continue my education. And you're going to wait and have kids after you're done going to school. Which I was almost there. Except for Walker. Yeah, that was my first senior year because I had Walker. Walker's dad was doing like the native youth camps and... Um, so basically you were hooked because so, he was native. I mean, maybe. But I was young. And then I found out I was pregnant with Walker. You don't have to put on a brave face for everybody, is I'm what being I'm saying. Nice. I know you're being nice, but you're having trouble adapting. Well, all I'm seeing is that being just not understanding about some things. And yeah. Like you said, it's not my circus, not my monkey, but it's also my family that you're jumping into, so. It just happens to be like the last couple of times when we've been around, there's been something going on. Well, it's not, not just like last couple of times, it's been every time I've come over. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Do you want me to run out and grab it? Come on. Oh, he just ran right in front of the car. Go get him. He's on this side. Get him right there. Get him off the road. Hey. How's it going? You're awfully dirty, bro. Walker's off. Ooh! <laughs> and he's like running down the freeway with a big dog. Oh, how's it feel to be drier, huh, buddy? It's funny now. <laughs> I've grown up with my mom, this super well-regarded lady where people from different, you know, universities are calling her because they want her to work there. She's gotten her master's, her PhD, her doctorate. But at the same time, she's putting herself back down. And maybe for her, it's a humbling experience. But from my point of view, it's really weird. I don't see myself as being Native American. I see myself as, you know, just being Walker. I don't need my mom to tell me, hey, as a man, this is your, this is your job. Who gives a rat's ass if it's traditional or not, you know? <laughs> and I think it's ridiculous. dot right there and then you take your four steps. Bull like Thaddeus is watching you. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> I have the force. It was, that's what that was. That was definitely the force. That was so sad. Dad was like not talking for like two days because we had had a big talk about the gender stuff and the women's roles and all of this. I just was really direct with him and I was like, I need you to know that I have more than one side to me and I'm not always okay in this women's role. We talked about it, but um, we're gonna try to talk with his mom and Vernon when we go to Lame Deer because they would be the ones doing the wedding. I just want to make sure you guys are doing okay, because the only time we've been there is when we drove through from Missouri, and we had that one experience, which was pretty unique. I mean, I'm not worried about our visit. I'm just 
probably gonna be awkward and I can't hide in my phone because it's not very good service out there. There's like no service out there. Okay, get your nose. <laughs> you left. <laughs> Come gather round, let me sing you a song About what little I know, it won't take long It's a game I played when I was young Cold cowboys and Indians We had to choose colleges that we'd send our scores to I chose, <laughs> like I'll ever get in, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> What's so good about it? It's like the Harvard of the West Coast. They want higher than an A. Pass, it's pass. Not in college. You pass with a C, you don't get into your profession and nobody hires you. So it's like, what's the point of doing it? Common sense is higher than an A. All right, all right. <laughs> Takes you further. Takes you in a different direction. But it takes you further. On some things. $150,000 in debt. Nobody told me about finances. The cowboy was never charged. Never shed a tear, never felt remorse. But in this country, sometimes it seems no one notices when the red man bleeds. Tristan, yeah. this is where Thad was working. So when he came back for Rhiannon's prom, this is how far he had to drive back to get home for prom. Wow. And your mom would even do my laundry. That was not true. It's just a joke, Mom. He's going to make it look like it, though, because he's bringing his pants back for his mom to wash. Remember how long the drives were going to South Dakota? It was just just really long and hot and then when we got on the reservation like you and dad like your demeanors changed <laughs> just in the sense that you were more cautious and I didn't understand why like I had no idea how dangerous Pine Ridge could be whenever we were there I never felt welcome it would get so hot in the sweat that I would peek my head out and make sure my face blocked all of the light so they couldn't see me <laughs> breathing under the <laughs> breathing under the blanket. There's just so much drama out there. Yeah, I know. You know, it was kind of rough sitting there listening to you guys' story about Pine Ridge. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate your guys' honesty, you know. It does mean a lot to my family that you guys are doing this. That 
that's only a dollar. Shit, that's cheap too. What do you think, one of these or what? A couple of them? Yeah. Deer on it. That's good butter. My dog bring them coming. She texted and said uh, they're on their way about quarter to nine. Well, if she starts asking me questions, I'm gonna start telling her. Well, fuck if we didn't do nothing. I said I think we're gonna beat that fucker to death, man. In front of everybody or not? <laughs> You guys are on because you had a question. Do you want to start? Go ahead. <laughs> I know where I stand with things. <laughs> well, your mom asked you if you had a question, so I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, so if we were to continue with the traditional ceremony like we talked about, what are some of the expectations or the things that I will need to like learn? As a Cheyenne priest, my answer to the questions that you have, why not enjoy your life as a man and a wife and appreciate and respect each other's culture? Each of you are not a slave to each other. A long time ago that used to happen where the man told his wife to do things. But things got modernized. Listen to the wedding that just happened on national television of uh, Prince Harry and the young lady that he married. The racial difference there, you know, him being from Great Britain, her being from LA, the two that come together are going to make their own tradition, their own culture, their own belief. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that, but the traditions are being lost. The traditions are dying. So I guess for me, it is a little more strict for me to where if it's gonna be done the Cheyenne way, I'd rather have it the Cheyenne way and keep it that way. You know, I left here when I was 15 and yeah, I was exposed to, you know, the Christian side of things with, you know, my. I call them my stepmom and dad, my white folks. They asked me about, well, what are you? I'm a Cheyenne man. You know, I was born a Cheyenne man. I'm gonna die a Cheyenne man, you know? I mean, she calls herself a modern woman where, because it came down to laundry, you know? When I said that about being a modern woman, I was trying to bring up that contrast, like, I, um, you know, I got my doctorate degree. I'm going to work at the, um, the university and I want to figure out how to live my life where they're together. But if you want to be a modern woman and be accepted for these things that you believe in, then it's best we don't do that yeah. yep. traditional ceremony that. because I can accept you that way. It's not that I'm not going to love you anymore. It's not that... That's... I'm always going to love you. I'm always going to mm -hmm. take care of the kids. But it's just the expectations are different. And like I tell her, in this house, your doctorate don't mean nothing. This is our family. I mean, not to say you're not a good mother, but I want you to be a mother to your kids. Are you really willing to accept the roles 
of the man and the woman, not this modern stuff of trying to save the world, standing up for women's rights, whatever. I mean, that's outside my home. That's mm-hmm. outside my family. I'm going to support my son. He's my baby. Being raised in a, in a white Catholic mission, I never knew anything about our culture or our traditions. I lost my identity. I couldn't speak my language. They took me away from my home. I learned how to be Northern Cheyenne later. Got into my ceremonies. Started healing. So by the time I met Thaddeus' his dad, I had all this, all the stuff had escalated in my life. But that's relationship. That's foundation, that's belief, that's love, that's choice. But love is not only a feeling, it's a doing. You as a woman, you take care of your husband. If you want, want to be right and wrong, you know, then think about it. Don't even get married. But if you're going to make that choice to make this commitment, you can't keep using those things. Your career... But when you come home, you're a mother, you're a wife. Just makes it sound like I'm lazy and I don't want to do anything. (laughs) You see, I mean, I don't mean to offend you or take it that way, but I'm just saying How many times today have you said that I don't do your laundry? It's starting to kind of hurt because of all the things I do. Like your mom is saying, it's love is an action and I do those things already. And I... I do a lot of those things, but I feel like it doesn't matter how much I do that, you still think that I don't. I can understand where he's coming from. I know it might be hurtful to you. It's like, it's like putting it in a box of it's all this one thing or it's all this one thing instead of a process where it's a, it's a path. It's not a box, it's a path. And we learn and we grow together. Based on one conversation with me when I'm like, you know, saying that about like, I'm a modern woman too. I have to say something about that vocabulary, the words that, that have already been said. He's not my type, I'm a modern woman. You know, that's, that might be your opinion of yourself. But that's something that you don't need to say to somebody to hurt their feelings. No, it's a joke. <laughs> and, and I know, but, you know, those things are, those things are hurtful. I think we've been sitting here for two hours now. I think we need a break. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, I think it's been said and done everything that, that needs to be strained out, like the ultimate decision is you guys is to decide whatever you guys want to do. So I need to know tomorrow.
I'm going to a conference in Connecticut. It's so exciting. I've never gotten to do a national conference. It's wonderful. We're so lucky to have you. Oh, I'm, well, it's just, it's this project we did a few years ago and we're following up with it, but they um, require your ID. Okay. And I was like, I don't have my ID. I was going to end up in prison or be dead. And that was the reservation life, you know. But when I made that choice to go to Washington, all my friends that I knew turned their back on me and started calling me every racial thing in a book about, you know, oh, you're too good for us now, you know. Even my mother, when I moved away and stuff, she disowned me. She disowned me as her son. My dad was passing his picture around and it came to my mom. She looked at it and she was like, which one is my son? I don't even recognize him no more. He's just a white kid. So it kind of, it, it crushed me, you know, that my own mom said that. There's two open reservations in the state of Montana, this reservation and the one in Fort Peck, to where white people can own land. The tribe's saying that the ownership of this reservation never changed hands. In other words, your fee patent isn't worth nothing. Mm -hmm. The compact gives tribal members permission to come on your ground because you got water running through here. They can go fishing anytime they want. They can build an outhouse if they want, and they can build a drying rack on your ground, and there's nothing you can do. The, the compact gives them aboriginal rights. So if that really did happen, I mean, his property wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be, a, there would be no value? It's, it's a very, it, 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 it's, it's, it's concerning, it really is. The government has made this mess. Yep. If the treaties in the 1800s was to give it to the Indians, then why, when the white people come in and settle on the reservation, did they tell them that the water goes with the property? I don't know a better way to put it, but that's it. So where does all the money go to? Because it's not going to the schools, right? It's, it's, not even, it's really not even going to the people. It's not going to the people. That's the sad thing. Corporate Pablo is where they get the money. Um, we would like to go to the Supreme Court and tell them, 
prove this to us. Is this America or is this the Confederate, Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribe? Right. My grandpa was born in January 1 of 1900. They moved here in 1936. Uh, in two, maybe three years, I'm gonna be debt free. But all of those years, there's been borrowed money mm -hmm. on this place <laughs> to survive on yeah. and to pay bills on and just make ends meet to try to make a living. You, you own this land here on the reservation? Well, that's, I say I do. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't think I own it. <laughs> well, like our reservation, it's uh, tribal members only. They're allowed to own the land. Mm -hmm. But like the crows next to us, theirs is kind of almost sold off. Right. Like 10 years. The Crow tribe's gonna disappear. So that's what, you know, everybody was worried about with lame deer, you know, with the coal and everything that mm -hmm. they're gonna lose the rights to it and lose the land. And mm -hmm. so I guess each tribe is rich with something. Right, know? yeah. sleep that night because all the images of the things that I've done come and haunt me things that I can't even describe to you you always ask for forgiveness that's the biggest thing that I had to learn in order to run the sweat and now prayer is, it helps me. My grandpa Jerry, he was the one that used to talk about, you know, the military doesn't care about you and stuff like that, you know. Because a lot of natives went to war before they're even considered citizens. I am trying to learn how to show emotions, trying to learn how to feel again. All these things that I had to hold back. Don't get me wrong, I love my country, I love the things that we have, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll forgive the government.
is when you got back, right? So, Pava, Cleroy, and you. <laughs> the hell are you laughing at? Your sunglasses. <laughs> what about him? Mr. Cool. Backwards hat and sunglasses. It's not a backward hat. What is it then? It's a scarf. Oh. Don't, don't. Don't, 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 don't. And move them. Sorry. I forgot. You try to tie, you know. Well, you weren't making it easy for me. You walked around. I said, I'm sorry. You'll learn. You'll learn patience. <laughs> No, I can tell that stressed you out, though. The Cheyennes believe when you step over somebody, you take their spirit with it, with you. That's why you don't step over them, their feet, any part of them. Yeah, but I didn't grow up with it all, so I can't remember it all the time. <clears throat> and I do the best I can, but... Well, let me ask you this. Do you like being stepped over? No, honey, I, I know that I understand about that. No, it's not but even about the tradition. It's not even about me. I just asked, do you like being stepped over? America the Beautiful. My daughter said, right now it's like you're holding on to a handful of pebbles. Maybe committing to the Northern Cheyenne traditions, maybe that can become your rock. heart. I know I want to be good support to Thaddeus and 
I don't want to lose who I am. Because I like who I am. All right, get over here. Hold hands. We're gonna hold hands. Kumbaya. Oh, this has to be a okay. We're so many saints. Oh, Praise oh, Saint. <laughs> I got stuff to do. I don't have time for this. I just thought we all needed to stand in a circle and hold okay. hands and pray. Oh, pray. Can I just come and give you a hug? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> You're so busy. I know. I'm so proud. Hi, buddy. Of you. Hello. Did you drive grandma? No. I drove. He drove. She drove. Mm -hmm. It I was easier take... over the mountain pass yeah. to have to drive. The, the pass, it's bad. And, and it's stressful, I yeah. know. Okay, you have been so far off the radar, what the heck? I stay inside and did look you, at the stock market all day. Did you know about my new job? I mean, I didn't know. Okay. Sort of, kind of. I so I got hired to run the early childhood program at UM Western in Dillon. Congratulations. She's the chair of and the And I told you over the text message, Do you know he was singing Lakota? Those are Lakota songs. His mom's been really difficult. Everything was gonna be Northern Cheyenne, Northern Cheyenne, you know what I mean? And they didn't show up. Some things came up and they were like, based on things you said in Lame Deer last month, we decided to cancel the traditional ceremony. And here's the man of the hour right here. Well, I've known about that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Glad you could make it. Yep, good to see ya. Yeah. How are things going with you two? Good still? We're having some issues. It's our uh, Phil. Billy Beth, they from Missouri. Come over here and meet Russ. <laughs> Where are you trying to escape here? <laughs> well, Phil, he's a cowboy too, so. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, this is uh, the family when they left. Uh, okay. Glad to meet you. Good to meet you too. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, St. Ignatius, north of Missoula. Okay. okay. About 40 miles. So how old was Thaddeus when he lived with you? He's lived with us a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. So he came to live with us the first time, I think he was in, I think it was a sophomore, sophomore oh, in high school. In high school. So he lived with us a couple of years then, and then did graduate from high school. He was the first male in the history of his family to graduate from high school. Oh, really wow. proud of him. Nancy is living her dream. I have a lot of regrets. There were things that happened in my life that I would never have wished for my children to be a part of, but they were. I know that it affected them when we had less than other people. I'm not a wealthy white American. Our life was not easy. I got married really young. Her father was nine years older than me. He was very abusive. 
I had no idea that a husband would ever treat a wife the way I was treated. When Nancy was 14, at the beginning of my walk, a native man invited me to my first Sundance. So we went, the whole family, we went. And it was like coming home. Yeah, then we can decide. Okay, go. Appreciate it. I wouldn't have come if Sharon hadn't said you're coming with me. I said, I don't think she wants me to. She goes, no, we're going. I know. I just didn't, you know, I just knew we had a lot going on. Okay. Okay. All right. I love you. You look beautiful. Thank you. I like your Tashwikas. Dragonfly. Tashwika. Yeah. A friend from high school. So, you guys, I can feel that you're almost there. Is it good? Oh, just the piece? I can't wait to see what you did. God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. I, Thaddeus William. I, Thaddeus William. Take you, Nancy Lynn. Take you, Nancy Lynn. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I now present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Redbird. <laughs> we honor our veterans. That's why we're here. So I want to honor Pleroy for being here, sticking with me, how we came this far. Because this, this way of life is difficult. Nobody is better than anybody else in here. We're all equal. We all have a past. And I try to teach the kids Rhiannon, Tristan, Walker, I try to teach them. Walker, you're still part of this family, you know. It's, I'm really proud to see my whole family here. And my new family that just happened today to be here.
just before I got you, that whole hillside right there lit up. Suspicious. Watch it for a little bit. Hang on to your arm. That is, I have to apologize to you. <laughs> Ask your forgiveness. <laughs> We're not making it to your wedding. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we didn't do it in a bad way to stop that traditional ceremony. But you know, it still can happen down the road. But I had a hard time living that way. Just from the woman's part of it. I had a hard time living that way when I went through that ceremony. It wasn't all bad, but <clears throat> the bad stuff I had to, I had to work through. But that was my relationship with your dad, that is. But when we got a divorce, he reminded me of that. He said, we're still married because we went through that traditional wedding. I said, you know, if I wish I had one of those big belts that these old ladies used to wear. I just want to close that door and just whip the shit out of you. I said, just so you can feel how much you hurt me. But I need to ask you guys for forgiveness too. I know I've missed so much. But so much in your life because of my own issues that I was going through. I don't know if that's hard for you to understand, but that's almost like that's our lifestyle. I'm not trying to make an excuse or justify, but You can't physically go and change somebody. You can't tell somebody what you're doing is wrong. But if you can look past the negative, then you can pray for that person. People treated me when you started going through these ceremonies, how they didn't want me around. And all these things that I, people did to me, humiliated me, put me down, insulted me in front of people. But I reacted in a way of standing up for myself. Can't stand there, start. I know there were some questionable issues around why you guys weren't there personal feelings, personal things going on. I have to let it go in order to, to move forward instead of being blinded of, oh, you weren't there, you didn't care. But it's people's choices. Almost in a way is that you don't even really have to to ask for forgiveness. I went through a lot. It's good to hear you say that. My children don't know me. 
they know about me, I'm their mom, but they don't know me, what I went through. The first 30 years of my life, I was in depression. I was uh, taken away from my home when I was three, brought up in a Catholic boarding school, and there I was sexually abused. And then I survived domestic violence when I got married. I didn't see color all those years. I was just existing. That's how I felt, I was just existing. My ceremonies are, are what saved my life, you know. I'm just thankful that my children are forgiving me. You know. All I can do is show them, you know, I can't, you know, there's not really words that I could say that's gonna make anything better for them, you know. Are you making biscuits, Mom? I guess I could. Is there baking powder or? Shit, I'll run and get your stuff. You're gonna make some bread. <laughs> yeah. I'll go get it. Yeah, make some man. It's pretty rare in my my neck of the woods. <laughs> no bread pan. Oh wow, no bread pan, guys. Should I get you that too? <laughs> sure, we can find that. Right. <laughs> What's everybody doing? Just watching TV. Hey, lady. Hey. How you doing? I was wondering if you were, just when you were gonna be here. Hey, you. Whatever you're selling, I don't want it. I thought I already <laughs> sold it to you. <laughs> I thought you bought it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> you're getting good. <laughs> You know, there is no fairy tale, but with me and Thaddeus, he's like, from where you've come from in your life and the things you've been through and the things I've been through and where I've come from in my life, he's like, this is a fairy tale.
When the daughter she returned back home, she found the cowboy waiting all alone. She was standing out by the laundry line. He said, "You know not to mix your reds with your whites." And the same goes for you, no daughter of mine. We'll be caught dead mixing with his kind. Now the daughter would learn to love again, but none could compare to the Indian. And then my mother she began to cry, and the tears came streaming from her eyes. She said, "My boy, now don't you see? The Indian's lover, that was me." And I think that it's about time you knew. I gave birth to his child, and the child is you. And I cried. So now you've listened to my song, but what little I know, it didn't take long. It's a game I played when I was young, 